Eve Russell. Eve! Guess who? Oh, Ivy, what a surprise. I thought you'd drowned. Well, lucky for you, I'm an excellent swimmer. You shouldn't have abandoned me, Eve. Julian almost found me on the boat. Oh, I wish he had. Then this whole nightmare would be over. Well, for some people, perhaps, but not for you. Now, if I'd been caught, the first words out of my mouth would have been your name. How do you think Grace and Sam would feel if they knew that I was only on Sam's boat because of your excellent tip? Oh, how dare you put me in the position to betray my closest friends? No, you put yourself in that position years ago by sleeping with Julian. And now you have to pay the piper by helping me get Sam into my bed. No, I'm not going to betray her again. Not after seeing how upset she was on the dock. I'm not going to do it, Ivy. I would really reconsider that, Eve. Unless, of course, you want your husband, your daughters, and <laughs> the community to know that you're nothing but a common whore. Yes, I'll be talking to you soon, good doctor. What are you doing at home? You could be flirting your icy little heart out with one of your favorite masseurs. Oh, I am so sorry to disappoint you, darling. But my plans changed. Don't tell me. The spa sent you home, suggesting you'd get more out of a night of hot, passionate sex with your husband than a seaweed wrap. <laughs> Hardly. Though if they had, I would have told them which one I found more tempting. And it wouldn't have been you. Shall I unpack your bag, Mrs. Crane? Oh, thank you, Muriel. I'll dry your things before I put them away. I notice they're a bit damp. Oh, uh, leave the bag, Muriel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> bit damp. Ooh, 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 ooh. What happened? What were you really up to last night, darling? Do tell how you managed to dampen your overnight bag when it hasn't rained for days. Where did you really go last night, Ivy? <laughs> well, I was headed towards the spa. But along the way, you decided to take a dip in the ocean with your favorite travel tote. <laughs> Very funny. No, it was too foggy. So I decided to come home. I left my overnight bag on the front step. And I, uh, forgot about it. The gardeners turned on the sprinklers this morning before I could remember it. <laughs> well, you weren't the only person whose plans were thwarted last night due to fog. Sam Bennett had to abort his sailing junket with the little woman. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, I went down to the docks to speak to him about a judicial system that has Luis guarding Sheridan around the clock. What on earth are you talking about? The feds deputized Pilar's son to protect Sheridan. Oh, dear. And after you and Alistair went to all that trouble to keep them apart. <laughs> oh, so I found Grace Bennett in a total tizzy because her poor Samikins was out in the fog all by himself. Seems the fool had taken the boat out on a trial run without her. Lord knows, if I were married to Grace, I'd have left her behind on purpose. Oh, good morning. Good morning, darling. I thought you went to your spa. Oh, plans changed. The weather wasn't agreeable. <laughs> Besides, there's so much to do on the wedding. Not that Teresa isn't doing a wonderful job. Oh, she's amazing. I can't get over everything she's done. Yes, I understand. She's become quite indispensable. Still, I'm sure Gwen would like to oversee the guest list and the invitations herself. Oh, uh, well, she won't be able to. Um, she's still in New York trying to close that deal. <laughs> but surely she's the bride-to-be. She wants to be involved in some of the wedding plans. Well, I'm going to try her father again, see if he can change her mind. But, I mean, I talked to her last night and I didn't have any luck. What? You mean you told her you wanted her to come home? <laughs> I practically begged her. But she's so committed to her work. It's one of the things I love about her. But why would you... Ask her to abandon her work and come home, and you just said that Teresa was doing a remarkable job. The wedding plans. I've seen firsthand how well you two work together. What's the real reason you begged Gwen to come home, son? 
I want Gwen back in harmony because I miss her. That's a foreign concept to your father, dear. Don't waste your energy trying to explain it to him. That's all right. You two keep on talking about soulmates and the like. I'll be in the library if anyone needs me. Well, that's highly unlikely. We both know the real reason you want Gwen to come home to my boy. Whatever your father said, just pay him no mind. He knows nothing of love and romance, and of course you want your bride to be back. I'm just so happy that the two of you are finally getting married and settling down, you know. Not, not everyone is lucky enough to spend their lives with their first love. What about your first love, Mother? What happened to him? Mother, I've asked you if you loved someone before you met Father, and you've never given me a straight answer. It's because it's... Well, there's just nothing to tell. Well, does he live here in Harmony? Do you see him? Please, Mother, I would really like to know. He's just, he's married to someone else now. Well, so are you. That doesn't mean you can't meet from time to time, know each other as friends. Ethan. Well, he obviously meant a lot to you at one time. Yes, he did. I can't talk to you about this. Well, Mother, I'm sorry. I don't mean to pry, but... It's just... You got me curious when you talked about Gwen being my first love. Well, she is, isn't she? Well, of course. But I just wondered... What happens if you don't marry that person? Will you ever get over them? You know, I don't really think I'm the right person for you to ask about this. <laughs> because your marriage to father is a disappointment. But you've always told me that I was conceived out of a great love. Is that true? I swear to you, by everything I hold dear, I have never loved anyone more than I loved your father. But I don't get it. I mean, you two are so distant. Things aren't always um, what they seem, Ethan, okay? Yeah, I guess not. Well, I got some work to do. Grace is the love of my life, the mother of my children, and that is sacred. You mean because you have a child with Grace, that's what binds you to her? It's one thing, yes. A very important thing. Well, we have a child. Sam. A son. A son that will bind us together forever. Well, that is good news. Sam will keep telling you all about his secret getaways, and you can tell me. Out of your mind. Didn't you learn anything at all from last night, Ivy? Julian came that close to catching you. Well, I'll just be more careful next time, that's all. Well, since you were eavesdropping, didn't you just hear Sam say that he doesn't want anything to do with you? Oh, that's what he says now. But I know something that'll change his mind and his heart. Ivy, there is nothing that you can say or do that is going to make Sam want you. Actually, there is. But the price tag, it's a little steep, and I'm not quite sure I'm ready to pay it just yet.